back to On The Flip Side. My name is Adam Schaubach. Today we're going to be covering Serge Tankin's solo album, Harakiri. As you can see, we've made the switch location-wise, and we are now in a different part of my house, and this is what the backdrop is going to look like, probably for quite a while. So Serge Tankin's Harakiri. Track listing is as follows. We have side one with Cornucopia. Track two is Figure It Out. Track three is Ching Chime. Track four is Butterfly. Track five is Harakiri. Track six is Occupied Tears. And then we have side two with Deafening Silence, Forget Me Not, Reality TV, Uneducated Democracy, Weave On, Revolver, and Tyrant's Gratitude. So we're going to dive into this and we'll see you on the flip side. Alrighty, we are back with side one of the record. Uh, track one here is Cornucopia. Uh, the clear influence that Serge Tankin has alone uh, with his earlier work on System of a Down, uh, it cannot really be understated. Listening to his solo material as opposed to System of a Down, you can really tell that like the, the shtick and a lot of the, the attitude from System of a Down wasn't necessarily from the, that band and all of its members, a lot of it just really flows with Serge himself and the, the influence that he has, I would say it's less so that that has influenced his solo work. It's become very apparent to me that it's not coming from the band. I mean, it's coming from Serge. Not to, to crap on System of a Down or anything like that, they're quite good. The stick here that Serge runs with and is known for at this point, um, he just runs with on this album and it works brilliantly. And it seems that like these solo projects and these solo albums of his really know how to scratch that kind of itch if you are looking for something in a similar vein because it's damn near the same kind of stuff. Cornucopia is an incredibly upbeat song and it's got these courses that you can like almost hear like some pop punk stylings in. This is kind of an interesting song in that regard in that I, I never really viewed you know System of a Down as like a pop punk band like they were always kind of just alternative rock in my opinion, but like the chorus on this track specifically, just it, it kind of has that pop punk angle while not being a pop punk song. It's really weird, but this track very much has its own distinct style. Track two is Figure It Out. This track immediately comes off with a much heavier rhythm section with these drums that are very much pummeling and in your face. A lot of double kick on this song uh, with Surge kind of wailing lyrics over the top of the track. This song has almost some like Mike Patton, you know, like Faith in the More kind of vocal harmonies that really cement this as one of the more interesting tracks on the album and one of my favorites so far. Track three is Ching Chime. This song opens with an excellent kind of like sitar section. I'm not sure if it's like a real sitar or if they're using like a guitar plugin or something, but I would wager uh, knowing like Serge Tankin's like background that he's using some kind of like Eastern or Mid-Eastern instruments here. Mostly because this track is just loaded with like that kind of flair. If you're a big fan of kind of the Stranger Things the System of a Down did on some of their records, you would definitely find this song very appealing. The course here feels a little bit disjointed in comparison to the rest of the track as it's this kind of big epic kind of sound and then anything else like the rest of the track is kind of goofy in its writing. Um, it's definitely you know not my favorite track here just because it kind of doesn't quite mesh up well but it's, at the same time it's not awful it's just it's a little odd how they've placed these big epic kind of wailing sections next to this kind of these goofy little lyricism bits here and there. Track four is Butterfly. Uh, the way Serge weaves political issues into his songwriting is done incredibly well, and especially so on this song. As a person who's been heavily immersed in like a lot of social issues, Serge really brings a refreshing delivery and knowledgeable touch on this song. The track itself is pretty par for the course on this album, uh, but it still works quite well due to its very well done writing. Track five is Harakiri. The title track for this album continues with the top-notch lyricism and vocal delivery. This song is paced, in my opinion, perfectly. Each segment kind of flows one into the next for one of the best put together songs on the record. Um, there's not like a ton of like, you know, focus on the instrumentation here. Um, like there's no like solos, you're not getting anything like that. Like the focus is less so on individual instruments on how everything rather fits into like its own sort of place. It's sort of puzzle piece together and it matches really nicely. Everything lines up, everything syncs up. And this is a very well done track and one of my favorites so far as well. Track six on the record is Occupied Tears. This track kind of tickles and like toys with the idea of like some electronic beats and plays around with some traditional instruments and subtle touches of sampling. Um, the majority of this track is not like electronic, but there are like sort of breaks here and there in the song where you can hear kind of these like subtle sampled little bits here and there. 
The main riff of this song is huge and very chunky. The vocal work is again excellent and varied well on this song. Uh, also the production here, on the drums specifically, is done really really well with lots of like isolated kind of cymbal crashes that are sort of like subtly tweaked here and there. You get like a lot of like the reverse cymbal thing flowing into, you know, the main cymbal crash. A lot of really well done production specifically just on the drum kit. Uh, production alone, this is an incredibly impressive track. That aside, one of Harakiri. We're going to give this thing a spin and we will come back to you on the flip side. Alrighty, we are back with side two of the record. Track seven is Deafening Silence. This track kicks off with an excellent guitar part and the electronic parts that were kind of being toyed with on the last part of the record are now amped pretty much all the way up. This is a very electronica heavy song at this point. We also get this really funky kind of beatboxing backing track instead of a full drum kit. Uh, this song kind of hits like out of nowhere. It's kind of a left hook. Uh, I absolutely was not expecting uh, this song just you know, it, it's it's certainly a surprise, not an unwelcome one. The ballsiness of the experimentation of this song is really excellent. Um, it's not the strongest song here, but I definitely like the avenue that this takes just because it's a really interesting sound that they're exploring here. Track eight is Forget Me Not. This track, uh, ironically, is one of the more forgettable songs on the album. The way this song falls back from like that kind of experimentation and kind of sits on its heels is kind of a bummer, especially just after the last track and how interesting that one got. Overall, not an awful track, but I think this is definitely one of the songs here that collapses under its own weight. Track nine is Reality TV. Some of the weirdness kind of appears again on this track, uh, but like the production side here is okay. But like these lyrics are almost like too preachy in some ways. It's like, you know, the, the, the sort of vapidness of reality TV and all that stuff. It's, you know, it's obvious. It's like very low hanging fruit thematically. And I think it comes off a bit poorly. Um, overall, this one is probably like the worst track here. Track 10 is Uneducated Democracy. This song definitely brings it back a little bit with an excellent refresher here, very packed to the brim with some sort of classic sort of hardcore punk rock instrumentals. Uh, this is a very high tempo jam. Uh, despite moving in a bit more of a traditional sounding direction, there are kind of some twinges of weirdness here and there. This song pulls itself off excellently, uh, especially in comparison to the last few tracks that we've had on this record. Track 11, the momentum kind of falls off a bit with Weave On. This track follows up with even more punk stylings, but the writing here on the album is starting to get a little bit stale, it's starting to get a little bit tired. The lyrics are decent and the vocal delivery is excellent, but you know, that sort of writing style just definitely starts to get tired at this point in the record. Track 12 is Revolver. This is definitely an example of writing here, starting to get extremely tiring. The second half of the album at this point is becoming audibly very homogenous. We have track 13 with Tyrant's Gratitude. The final song has a really, really interesting way of approaching the verses instrumentally. And the chorus, however, just like, kind of gets obnoxious very quickly. Um, this song definitely has some of the best verses on the album, but just the chorus like shoots itself in the foot super, super hard. Um, as for final thoughts on this album, there are a handful of really good tracks on this thing, and this album is, in my opinion, a very top-heavy record, with most of the strongest songs being on side A of this record, and this B side is definitely loaded with like a lot of ideas and some of them land a little bit better than others like this whole album really is kind of a collection of just you know some ideas and it's like they definitely moved the stuff that they knew worked better up towards the front of the album this did not have a very great closer like it wasn't like a best save for last kind of thing and so the album kind of just fades in quality as you listen to it which is in my opinion a horrible move you know, I think this album could have absolutely been like an eight track album. It did not to be, need to be 13 tracks at all. It was, in my opinion, half of the album is kind of an unnecessary listen with the exception of like Uneducated Democracy, which is actually quite a good track. Um, but side A of the record, much, much better than side B here. What did you guys think of the record? Leave it in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching again and uh, more videos to come here soon. Again, thank you all so much for watching and we will see you on the flip side.